Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Alistair. So as Alistair mentioned, I'm lucky enough to be MLA's Chief Marketing and Communications Officer. And, uh, you know, in my role, at about 6 a.m. every morning, I scan my media alerts and I review what's making headlines. Not just what's making headlines in the red meat industry, but what's making headlines generally. What are the sorts of things that consumers are seeing when they wake up? And here's an example of the types of things I might typically see. Now, some of those headlines won't surprise you. Some might seem a little alarming, or perhaps you might just dismiss them as fads. But I'm not doing my job, and I'm not doing my job for you, if I don't interrogate what's beneath those headlines. So today, a really quick look at global megatrends, just to help us make sense of those headlines and to understand what the implications are for the Australian red meat industry. There are five megatrends I'm going to look at, and the first of these is more from less. Now, the Earth, as we know, has limited supplies of natural resources, energy, water, food, and all these things are essential for human survival and for maintaining lifestyles. Now, numerous sets of data and research reveal that these resources are being depleted, and often at quite alarming rates. But at the same time, we've got population growth and income growth, and these are putting upward pressure on demand. This more from less megatrend explores how companies, governments and communities are and will continue to find new ways of ensuring quality of life for current and future generations within the confines of those limited resources. Now, some of MLA's own data supports this megatrend. Consumers prefer natural meat. So what do I mean by that? A quality product that's been produced with minimal um, human intervention. And this desire for something truly natural, it's not just limited to the wealthy or developed nations. As the chart on my left, you can see, is a snapshot from our global tracker and highlights that around one-fifth of consumers across quite diverse markets at different stages of development are seeking natural meat, again, minimal human intervention. Consumers are also concerned about the human's impact on the environment, and these concerns are often closely linked to farming practice. Within our industry, areas where this trend is likely to impact, both positively and negatively, include efficiency and on-farm management, sustainable practices, yield from the animal, and that's leveraging everything that animal produces, including manure, and an overall shift to eating efficiency all the way through to managing plate waste. Organic food also forms part of this more from less trend, and the organic food market continues to grow, particularly in countries such as China, where consumers still have grave concerns around food safety. In addition, a 2016 report by Euromonitor notes a shift towards broader, green-minded products, products with low food miles, or product raised without pesticides. And this is partly influenced by weakened economies and the fact that organic products are very, very expensive, but also people's consideration to wider social and ecological issues. They want to choose products that are not necessarily organic, but address their ecological and animal welfare concerns. And this takes me to my second mega trend, great expectations. This is a consumer, societal, demographic and cultural mega trend. It explores the rising demand for experiences over products and the rising importance of social relationships. And as part of this, these great expectations, consumers demand transparency. They expect companies to be honest and trustworthy and responsible. And indeed, they have ways to expose those that are engaged in dishonest or unethical activities. This mega trend captures the expectation people have for more personalised products, uh, services that meet their unique wants, needs and indeed their values. And indeed, these need also to be delivered en masse. This mega trend is seen in food by an ever-increasing number of food apps that help consumers know more and more about their food they're buying and who is producing them. Indeed, these expectations have been greatly enabled, nurtured and empowered by technology, smartphones in particular. 
Not only do these devices enable consumers to readily research and compare and contrast products, we're also seeing an increasing number of shoppers across a multitude of markets um, but purchasing groceries, including red meat on their smartphones. And over recent years, there's been a steady increase in the number of consumers shopping online with their phone and tablets, tablets and at the same time a modest decline in those using their laptops and desktops for such purchases. And launched in 2011 as an, a chat app, WeChat was initially seen as a Chinese version of Facebook and WhatsApp. This app has now become a hub for all internet activities, to research, to make purchases, and as a platform to find a myriad of services, hailing a taxi, paying a bill, securing a doctor's appointment. And while we're thinking about online purchasing, we're seeing real examples of consumers wanting and responding to transparency. In this very simple example, by displaying tubs of Ben and Jerry's ice cream with the lid off, and making the variant bigger and easier to read, created a 3.6% sales uplift for Unilever. So the implications of uh, this particular trend is how your product looks online and what your social media profile says about you can be just as important as the product, you, the, the physical product. Now this takes me to Megatrend 3, the Silk Highway. Now the coming decades will see the world economy shift from west to east and north to south. Rapid income growth in Asia and to a lesser extent South America and Africa will see billions of people transitioning out of poverty and into the middle income classes. The powerhouses of this new world economy are China and India. This economic shift will build new export markets, trade relations, business models and of course cultural ties for Australia. Now this is not a new trend. Indeed, by their very definition, global megatrends are long-term. So I thought I'd share a few slides on the markets and illustrate what this might mean for Australian, the Australian red meat industry in the near future. We have finite supplies of red meat, and as we heard Tom Maguire speak this morning, um, you know, we are a small player um, when you think about the global production of red meat. And with that finite product, we need to identify the very best markets for us. And in assessing markets, one typically starts with population size. So what I have behind me is just um, a number of our key markets and just absolute population size. One particular market will stand out to you, and that's China, with a population of approximately or just under 1.4 billion. I'll also draw your attention to the US, Japan and Korea, three key markets for the Australian red meat industry. But of course, Population alone is not enough. Realising the opportunity in any market is fundamentally linked to consumers' ability to purchase. Now, the correlation between income growth and protein consumption is well established. With various studies showing that US $35,000 per annum is the average household income at which discretionary products are purchased, and indeed protein as part of that is regularly consumed. And here are a number of households in any given country that meet that threshold, that US $35,000 per annum. You can actually see there are very few households here in China who could afford a product like imported beef or lamb. So today, our current key markets, markets like the US, Japan, Korea, remain very important and indeed very attractive for the Australian red meat industry. However, let's look at the pace of change. Same data again, number of households earning US $35,000 per annum in the year 20, uh, 2020. In just under three short years, the number of middle or higher income households in China will slightly exceed that of Korea, and arguably almost double that of Australia. These are the households who can regularly afford popular proteins. So this Silk Road trend is real. It's very real but it will take time to unfold. And last but not least, as we're looking at the markets, there is devil in the detail. Yes, we need to look at attractive countries, population and the number of households who can afford our product. But equally, it's about identifying those attractive cities. And in this particular data set, we're looking at gross domestic product per capita for selected cities, further identifying those locations with households with the potential to afford Australian red meat. 
By identifying these cities, we can better understand local market factors, such as the retail structure, the food service structure, competitive intensity, physical access, and of course, the humble consumer and far from humble. By this I mean we want to understand local cuisine types. We want to understand what's on trend, what's on menu. We, are, we want to understand the cooking methods, the size of the kitchen, the size of the fridge, and ensuring all the time we're supplying the right cut in the right format. And what these few slides very simply illustrate is that yes, income is set to rise, and in all likelihood, so too will the demand for popular proteins. But the emerging markets do take time to develop, so it remains equally as important to defend our mature markets and to continue to um, explore the profitable segments that are in those, whilst at the same time nurturing those newer markets. Megatrend number four is forever young. The ageing population is an asset, and Australia and many of the countries that make up the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, also have an ageing population. Elderly or ageing citizens provide a wealth of skills and knowledge. Nevertheless, there are some challenges associated with an ageing population and associated demographic trends. And one of these challenges is rapid growth in healthcare expenditure. In Australia, where almost 20% of our population is forecast to be over 65 years of age by 2025, expenditure patterns by household are also rapidly changing. Health-related expenditure is forecast to grow fastest, overtaking restaurant and hotel spend by 2020. And this is important. Restaurants and hotels are a very lucrative channel for Australian red meat, and indeed Australians are some of the highest spenders globally on eating out. So, something for us to think about. And our other major markets are also walking down this path with ageing populations. Japan, Korea, China, with some faster than others. The implication for us, we need to link red meat's brand image and messages with health. And we need to explore value added opportunities specifically targeting older and wealthier consumers. And this will become increasingly important in the years ahead. Mega trend number five, fear, uncertainty and doubt. Now this particular trend started with the events of September 11. And just as we were beginning to um, regain our confidence we had the global financial crisis hit. Um, and we heard Anna Spears talk about this this morning, but through the course of that global financial crisis, we started to lose confidence and indeed trust. We lost trust in governments and institutions. And last year's US election results used fear in the form of terrorism and xenophobia as a potent and winning message. And the Brexit push used a very similar strategy. And today, where are we? Well, there's daily references to fake news, and world leaders seem to mention that quite often. There are so many competing sources of information. What and who do you believe? Who do you trust? So with the world feeling somewhat out of control, individuals start to perhaps turn away from the big picture, and they focus on what they can control. And typically, this is everyday choices. And when it comes to food, they want to be confident in the choices they make. An example of this is um, a 2016 CSIRO study, which showed against a longer term trend that there is now an increasing number of consumers who are using pack labels to determine their purchase. A majority of 35% of participants felt that country of origin was the single most important piece of information now on a food label, more important than the ingredients panel and more important than nutritional claims. And this trend is evident in MLA's own consumer tracking. This is from our global tracker. With significant numbers of consumers in key markets looking first for country of origin labelling. So what's the implication for us? We need to continue to adhere to and promote our world-class integrity systems, our paddock to plate traceability, our food safety and certification, and promote our country of origin in export markets. For brand owners, Consider perhaps a more specific regional or local paddock to plate story with emphasis on your controls right through the value chain. Now you might be thinking this is all very interesting Lisa but it all feels a bloody long way away and does it really impact how consumers feel and how they act? So one last chart for you. Here's an example from Australia. 
This is a chart from our annual community sentiment tracker, a study we've been running for the last six years. We ask a whole range of questions, um, but along the way we begin to find out if respondents are limiting red meat or eating less red meat. And if they are, we're keen to understand what is the single biggest reason why you're limiting your consumption of red meat. And in understanding that, we want to understand how, what the trend is. Now, it should come as no surprise that the line there at the top in dark blue, the biggest factor is price, 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 price. Beef and lamb in this country typically retails at a four times price per kilo premium to chicken. And in an environment of declining real wages, housing affordability, spiralling utility bills, for most households, every dollar counts. Now, health concerns remain um, the main reason for 24% of respondents, but we can see that actually is trending down in the last couple of years. But what I do want to draw your attention to is the yellow line, those consumers who are concerned about the treatment of animals. And for this group, 2% in 2010, 12% in 2016. This is the single biggest reason why they're limiting their consumption of red meat. And this does mirror trends we are seeing in other markets. Now in Australia, women are typically more concerned about this than men, but they are often the main meal preparer. And if they're not, they have extraordinary influence over what is being prepared and what is being purchased. And as a result, we do see retailers actively promoting their sustainable practices, their sustainable sourcing, and their animal welfare credentials of the products they stock on shelf. So these megatrends suggest both threats and opportunities for Australian red meat. And demand is a factor of so many variables. We need to continue to monitor, reassess, adapt, and innovate. And we're required to reposition our product to realise opportunities and, and also realise those relative premiums for Australian beef and lamb. So back to those headlines where I started. Global megatrends around sustainability, uncertainty and great expectations, they're real. As part of this, the demand for natural product and protein is strong and it's set to grow in both developed and developing markets. Equally, increasing numbers of consumers want to know more about the food they eat and where it comes from and who produces it, with technology and social media greatly enhancing their ability to research products and share their views and experiences. On matters around human nutrition, the environment and animal health and welfare, as an industry we must commit to sound industry policies, practices that demonstrate our adherence to those policies and have programs in place to support best practice right throughout the value chain. All of these things, policies, practices, programs, underpin global market access, and that underpins demand for our product. Australian red meat, in my mind, is incredibly well positioned to meet consumer needs. We must, however, be equally ready to address consumer questions. Thank you. <laughs>